Hi guys, welcome. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to paint 55 Sisters of Battle, both old and new, in a Order of the Bloody Rose style. Hi guys, thanks very much for joining me. Right, today uh, we're going to be doing possibly New Army, New You. Um, I've got a funny feeling this will be coming out in the new year, so why not? If it's going to be a new year, let's get you guys a new army. This is my Sisters of Battle. Uh, these are my collected figures so far. We've got a mixture of old metal, um, which I'm going to be repainting. I've actually stuck a larger base around the bottom so they can fit with the more modern equivalents. But what I'm going to be doing is effectively the same for all of my figures. We are going to be just creating nice looking effects. Um, and we're going to be doing it with some stuff from Green Stuff World. Always a good job. Always a good shout to Green Stuff World to make some cracking paints, especially for airbrushing. Um, we're going to be doing it with a red armor. And then I'm going to kind of go against the grain. Uh, I am doing Order of the Bloody Rose. But they do a black outer and a white inner on their robes i don't like doing that because that's just going to cause me a problem i'm going to go reverse so we're going to be a section of the uh, order of the bloody rose we're going to basically do black inner as best we possibly can and we're going to do a cream outer which hopefully some of the cream outer i'm going to be able to use just a little couple of tricks of a trade just to be able to make sure we can get that painted quick on my newer models, as you can possibly see, they are headless. So we've actually got all the heads separate. We've got them uh, it's still on the sprue. Uh, I've cut them away as best as I possibly can. The heads that I'm wanting to use. I've actually probably got more heads than what I actually need. And um, we're going to be doing those are sprayed up with some grace here. And we're going to be doing those separately, simply because it'll be quicker and easier to get the hair around the back of the neck. And with the contrast paints, we can just effectively slap it on. And it will actually give me a really good effect without me having to focus primarily on these guys we can keep these a nice dark color the guns are mainly going to be primarily like a bolt gun metal so it's just basically going to be that sort of silver lead belcher i think it's called now um and like i said the outer of the cloaks we're going to have as we're going to have the inner of the cloaks as black we're going to have the outer of the cloaks as a cream you will need to do because the way we're going to be painting up the armor is with some green stuff world paints i probably previously mentioned that in the statement but it's going to be the metallic white and we're going to be using the red ink that they have uh, to create. Very similar to what I did on the Blood Angel. And I think I've actually done it on the, uh, I did it on the Inquisitor as well. Inquisitor model that wasn't from Games Workshop. That being said, it's going to look gorgeous. We all know it. <laughs> so let's get cracking. Um, I'll primarily show you guys what to do on the newer figures. The older figures, like I say, I've, I've tried to repaint them. Um, they're not the greatest quality figures because they're really old. Well, I mean, really old. Um, so I'm mainly going to be primarily focusing on my newer figures. But when I play with my army, you'll probably, hopefully, fingers crossed, you'll probably never know. So one of the first things we're going to do with our sisters is to prep them using some Mystic White from Green Stuff World. And I've got it on my little turntable. Um, this is basically just to just so I can make it sure that it's got like that Xenophil effect. We're trying to get, I'm going to get even the gloves. I'm going to actually put the gloves into this particular armoured colour because I like the idea of it being an armoured cloth with a reflection. Uh, I know that's a bit weird, but it's just how I like stuff. Um, I've got some Mystic White already loaded. You will have to put it in layers because it is quite a, an odd paint. So basically I'm just going to try and catch as much armour as I can. Um, don't be worried about getting it on the cloak or anything else. We're going to pre-prep them for something completely different later anyway. So, we're now on to the red, ruby red ink stage. And what I'm going to tell you is to do them in batches of fives. So basically, 
like have your start model then a second model then a third and fourth and fifth and then once you've done the fifth come back to the first model because this particular paint you are going to have to do it i'm just going to move those out of the way for now you are going to have to do it in stages um so you're going to you're basically building it up now we're not using the turntable because we want to get all over the armor so every nook and cranny needs to have this so we've already you know with the metallic and it being pre-darkened this should help our cause Now that we've got the red down, we just need to make sure we get the outside of the cloaks. Now I know traditionally the order of the bloody rose is on the inside, but here we're going to be doing it on the outside just because of course I think it looks better because I like the white and red combination and it's just going to be easier to do, especially when we're speed painting. So get some, um, get some grace here put on and on to the next stage. Also, don't forget to actually do the faces as well, as we're going to be doing this later on. So paint up the faces and the hair. Um, if you've got them separate, that's great. But if not together, then just make sure you paint those up with grace here as well. And now, of course, once grace here is finished, we're just going to be adding on the Apothecary White from the Citadel Contrast Range. This really does give a good base for us to be able to dry brush some white onto. When painting white, of course, never paint white. It always, you always kind of have a, a very light, very light grey, um, so that your highlights can actually be white. It's a very strange way of working, but we all know that it works. Okay, so, next up. We're going to be doing some dark old flesh do this on the faces if you can and we've got some black templar as well which we're going to be doing on yeah and have a look at some of these some pipes that i've painted as well so basically the pipes we're going to be putting the black on we're going to be putting the uh, dark old flesh on any flesh and uh, if you're like me and you've left the heads off you can always go because i've sprayed these with the gracier spray so I'm going to go and do the faces. Um, if you've got a mask on like that one there or that one there, or even on some of the old metal ones, there's a mask on, try and paint that mask using the Black Templars Black. That will make sure that it looks different to other black that you've actually got on the model. But yeah, basically just paint your faces, paint your little bit of black. So, we're now going to do some hair uh, on the, uh, the heads. So what I'm basically doing is just go back over with some grace here, just in case you've made any mistakes. So reinforce that colour on the actual hair itself. And then if you want any black hair, use that. If you want any grey hair, just use this neat. If you want any blonde hair, we're going to mix Nasdaq yellow with plenty of technical medium. That should actually thin it down and we can do the same with the wildwood because of course that's the brown. And if we mix it, we can make a lighter brown to go on the actual head itself. So once I've got the flesh done, I've got, yes, and we know we've got peroxide blonde hair. I'm quite liking the idea of going retro style workshop. Um, so I've got my, it's not as yellow as it can be, um, but we can always change some of the, uh, the formula later on. I've got a dry brush with some Ophirian Grey, and we are just gonna dry brush our white. Get up again being careful now don't worry too much if you catch the black because it makes it a nice little extreme highlight on the black so just about all over on the cloaks don't do it on the symbols because what we're going to do is just to edge highlight those or bring it in with the Ophirian grey uh, using a brush So just before I move on to the next section, uh, if you want to, you haven't got to do this particular point, but I'm going to dry brush the, the uh, black hair with Mac Grey, I'm going to dry brush the blonde hair with Carrick Stone, the brown hair with Mornfang, and the white hair with White Scar. I am not going to dry brush 
the white cloth, I'm wanting that to have that grey look. So the white scar, but what I am going to do is to put a little bit of edge highlighting of white scar into the emblems. Not on the cloaks, just on the emblems to make them stand out like a different white to what the cloak is. So we're back into it. I've done all the, uh, the hair and the heads have been done on many of the actual figures. As you can see, I've got a mixture of the brand new and I've got a mixture of the old. And as you can see from, if you can see it on there, I mean, that's more of a red red. And of course, because that's on newer plastic, it's, it's come through and it's made it look a lot shinier than, than I wanted it to. Well, not actually what I wanted it to. That's a bit, you know, it's come through a little dull, unfortunately. Uh, all the heads have been done. I've got a couple of spares there, but they can go on to some later figures. I'll keep hold of them already painted. We're going to hit some metallics. So we've got some tinny tin uh, from Vallejo. Um, I'm not quite sure if they still make that, but if not, like some form of dark brass. We've got a typical, the old faithful lead belcher from Workshop. It's a really good silver. It's a very good silver base um, for what you're wanting to do later on. And of course, we've got some Retributor armor, I hope, because that's slightly open by the looks of it. I hate these lids. I know a lot of people say put it into dropper bottles, but I hate putting stuff in dropper bottles. <laughs> <laughs> can't bother with it so basically we're going to be doing some um, some metallics now what's going to happen is all the weapons the whole weapon is going to be lead belcher so we're going to be doing that first and that whole weapon is going to be painted with that particular color if there's any little funnel bits on the masks you can do that while it's off the figure but i'm going to be doing that while it's on the figure and again they're going to be painted up with some silver We've then got some little May emblems, kind of like if you can see, um, down, kind of down here dangling between the old legs. Now that's going to be Retributor armor, so anything like that is going to be gold. So if there's anything on the knee as well, I'm also going to paint that, diff well, I'm actually going to paint that different colors because that knee emblem and the one on the back, so that there's going to be silver, and then that, I'm wanting to paint that Retributor armor. Um, but the knee emblem, I'm not quite sure what to do with that yet because I'm not quite sure if I want it to be a different colour to show the different squads. There's not really much in the way of squad recognition on sisters because a whole shoulder pad is taken up. So it's whether or not I want some form of markings. If there's anything around the legs like any strappings, um, we're going to be coming back to that with some... Uh, to be honest with you, you can actually do that gold which will work quite well on the um, on the, on the dark red. Um, don't forget to do all of the figures. Uh, also, if you've not noticed, I've done the green. That's basically just uh, the orc flesh from Games Workshop on the contrast paint. Be careful when you're going over it. We don't want to have to restart these. So let's crack on. So now I've got the metallics down. Ooh. <laughs> let's start getting some shading. Um, so all the silver we're going to shade with normal oil, standard really to be honest with you. I've got a shaker ball in there. Sometimes I find normal oil, it can settle, which is a bit weird. And I've also got some Agrax Earthshade. Now this is the gloss version. This looks really good on the gold. Um, the tinny tin I'm not really going to be, it's quite, a, tinny tin is quite a dark colour. And I didn't actually realise how dark it would be. Apologies, there's some blue tech there. Um, how dark it will be against the red. Um, so I'm just going to leave that as it is. And then, of course, we're just going to highlight that with a little bit of silver later on. But I'm going to put the Agrax Surfshade Gloss on first. Because, of course, we've got some gold accents on some of the weapons. And then we're going to go over all the silver with known oil. Now that that objective has been achieved and we've uh, washed all of the metal parts... We're now going to highlight them. I'm going to be using Stormhost Silver. Now I used to use um, the Necron Compound Dry, but I don't know why, it just keeps drying up and it becomes very flaky and powdery and sometimes gets on all the other models. I've got a small dry brush, a medium and a large, depending of course upon the weapons that we're doing. We're just going to put the contrast paint, uh, sorry, contrast paint, the dry brush over all of the weapon, trying to leave it, well, in fact, you can even do a little bit of the old gold there. Uh, just try not to do it as heavy on the gold and the tinny tin parts as you are doing it on the standard silver. So basically, crack on. Now I've got the storm host on, we are going to be putting some contrast black. It's a black Templar, and what we're going to do to paint the casing of the bolter. I need to put a couple of coats on, do so. 
we're just effectively going to paint the casing of the bolter and that should give it that nice metallic black and that'll just give it a front same with these newer ones but of course the newer ones have got a bit more fancy uh, so just be careful, I mean if you want to you could just do that but I'll probably use a different brush when doing these because these are actually surprisingly smaller bolt guns. So now we're going to be adding some Rhinox hide, this is into all the leather pouches and areas that well look like leather so like the gun holsters and, and things of that nature, they're all just going to be uh, just basically based up using the Rhinox hide. I do have a painting leather video um, so if you want to go and watch that, that will actually tell you how to do the rest of this process once you've got the base coat down. Now we're coming in with some Azarius Purple, I think that's how you say it. Uh, this is mainly for the Purity Seal, so because of course we've got a red armour, normally I do a red Purity Seal, but if I've got red armour, I'll do a purple Purity Seal. So paint all those with that nice little base coat in colour. Then follow that up with some Jean Steeler Purple as a highlight. And to finish off the Purity Seals, we've basically got some Carrick Stone. Uh, with you, we've kind of wet blended it up with you Shabti Bone and then gone over it with Seraphim Sepia. And then just um, use some more you Shabti Bone as a highlight. Sorry, I'm completely forgetting what colours I'm using here. Now I'm going back in with the Flesh Color Dark or Flesh Contrast Paint. I'm just getting a little tiny bit on a very thin brush and I'm kind of creating lines. This is creating my faded text on any of my scrolls. It's just a technique that I've, I've always done to be honest with you. Um, I always find that it actually comes out quite well in the end. Okay, so by the feel of this we are coming to the end. I have done some blue lenses there's a video on my channel regarding that I just need to put the white dots in uh, we've got majority of any sort of purity seals have been done you just need to look over just make sure you've not made any mistakes if you want to put some transfers on you can I'm not and the reason I'm not putting any transfers on is because I've painted these even though these are kind of my order of the bloody rose which is what I'm using uh, my skirts are different, so the um, I, I've, I'm blue, you know I'm white on the outside. Uh, it's black on the inside, rather than it being the opposite way around. So that's mainly because I, I find it found it easier painting it this way. So I'm just going to leave them without any real emblem on there. I'm going to put some transfers on that once I've managed to do it. Um, probably I don't know. I might have bloody rose on there as well. But if you were going to add transfers on, I'd recommend putting them on the skirt if you could. Um, the only thing is as well is that some of the, they're going different directions so I find it quite difficult unless you had a plain shoulder pad to put any sort of identifying markings on these. I probably will do on the tanks um, but not really on the infantry. So I'm going to start to say I'm pretty much done. Um, we've got the leather done, we've got the blue done, we've got the purity seals done, I've even got the banners done which I've done in a very similar style to the purity seals just using a wet palette rather than your, your normal standard procedures. Um, blue lens, I've done the eye lenses as well with a quick drop of the green. So we're uh, pretty much ready to rock and roll. We just need to base it. So base it in however you want to base it. And we'll come back and look at some finished product. And there you have it. I have done, I've done the little bits, um, like the swords and everything else, uh, you'll be able to find the videos in my playlist regarding doing that. And of course, just finishing it off that Metal Cannonessa's flame bit on the back. Um, yes, it's on my computer desk, <laughs> as you can see from my keyboard in the background. All that done, it, it wasn't one of the more easier ones that I've done, if I'm being completely honest. Um, it took me quite a while due to the fact I've been limited on sessions, um, especially since I'm now having to work from home. Well, I've been having to work from home due to COVID for quite a while now, but it does actually ha hamper me being able to paint, unfortunately. So it has taken me a lot longer than I wanted it to. But that's still a good force there. We've got three troop choices. There's a fast attack choice in the form of a Dominion squad. 
Uh, we've got an HQ with a Canon S, two Elites and two heavy support choices. So it's always a good, good starting point. Well, thank you very much for watching, guys. Uh, please like, share, subscribe, hit the notification button if you do want to see more. And we'll see you next time, hopefully next week, with some more painting videos. Take care.